This is not just about some small communities whose wells are going to go dry and who are going to lose a lot of money on their property. This whole dam removal campaign is the tip of a very big and ugly spear. It is a campaign led by the most evil people in the world who want to do what they call rewilding most of North America. They want to destroy the American experiment with property rights and individual liberties, and they want to return to some sort of weird neo-feudal system where we all act like slaves for the rich people. Now going back to a system like that, requires that we go back to real primitive belief systems. I refer, of course, to nature worship, or in this case, fish worship. Anybody who pretends that there is anything going on in this dispute remotely representing scientific resource management is either a liar or a fool. We have a new totem fish, right? The endangered coho. This fish was never common in California. You know, when the evangelists from the National Marine Fishery Service first came up the river to talk to the corrupt tribe and the elders about these important fish, the corrupt tribe elders said they'd never seen them. It's in the tribal minutes. You can look it up. But now they got bribed, like everybody else, to pretend that we're all engaged in some great and holy crusade to restore the holy coho salmon. But you can look it up. You can look up the counts of the coho salmon before World War I on the Klamathon racks. That's a couple hundred fish some years at all, you know, hardly any. The idea that Upper Klamath Lake was full of salmon. How stupid can these people get? The idea that the Upper Klamath River was full of salmon, a false myth. You know, maybe in a really good year when the salmon were swarming everywhere, a few might make it up as far as that, but most of the time the lake was a stinking swamp before the settlers got here. The first settlers got here, and the horses wouldn't drink the water because it was so crappy. That's right. Before they put the dams in and all made all these human improvements, you know what happened in the late summers? The river was a warm swamp water river. This is not salmon habitat. There's no important salmon spawning grounds up there. The people who built these dams recognized that they could make the environment better, not just for people, but for salmon too. They could put minimum flow requirements in the dams. And they could even out these hot periods, and they could make the water cooler and cleaner in the fall, which was for the benefit of the salmon and everybody. But when Pacific Corps showed up to relicense the dams, what happened? The fish worshippers showed up and said, we want to restore this mythical, magical race of salmon that can live in stinking swamp water, and the dams are in our way. How can we dare stop the salmon from having a right to go all the way up the river? Who are these people? What is this arrogance? I want my kind of fish where I want them, and the hell with everybody else. You know what we need? We need people with the wisdom to say no. People with the wisdom to say, you're wrong. Or better yet, people with the wisdom to say, you're fired. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> because the answer here is simple. The answer here is that we as human beings who are granted dominion over the earth, and if we want to draw a line in the river and say, above this line, we will have reservoirs and freshwater lake fish, and below this line, we will have salmon, that is our right to draw this line. That is a decision that we are entitled to make. That is scientific resource management. You take the areas that are best for salmon, and you improve them for salmon. And you take the areas that are useless for salmon anyway, and you use them for something else. But well, we don't have any real scientists left. We don't have real scientists working for the government. We have empty-chested men and air-headed women who talk about modern standards and environmental justice and all sorts of words that really mean we want, we, we want, we, we want, and the hell with you. That's all it means. And of course, I'll tell you another simple thing about salmon. You know what? If you want more salmon, how about just stopping blocking the mouth of the river with gill nets and herding them, herding them into the gill nets with power boats? How about that? And shooting at anybody who tries to document it. These documentary filmmaker guys, they should go down there and film what's happening at the mouth of the river and see if they get shot at like the other people. You know, in New York State, they had a striped bass crisis a while ago. An anadromous fish, just like salmon. And they just said, all right, We'll shut down the commercial fishing for 10 years, and the fish came right back. But we can't do that here, because the fish worshipers, they worship the Indians too. 
Now, what would happen if we were actually dumb enough to remove these dams? Well, I'll tell you what would happen. Millions of tons of toxic sludge would flow down the river for the rest of our lives, and it would destroy the spawning grounds downriver, and it would clog people's water supplies. You know, it's been, uh, I can't remember when it was, it's been about 15 years since they pulled out two major dams on the Rogue River, much smaller river. Have you ever read anything about how all the salmon came back? No, because they didn't. And the fishing guides up there complain because they get these strange sicknesses on their hands from touching the water that's now contaminated with all the crap that came down from behind the dams. But you won't know that unless you go talk to them because that's not something that the true religion really wants to hear about, right? It's, uh, and the Iron Gate hatchery that was built to mitigate the dams. Well, if there's no more dams, why run the hatchery, right? These fish worshippers, they hate hatchery fish. So you know what's going to happen if they take out the dams? They're not going to be any more salmon. And you know what's going to happen then? You know whose fault it's going to be? It's going to be your fault. Yeah, it'll be your fault. How dare you live on this precious Shasta land and this precious Karuk land and use their holy water to do things like grow your crops? There'll be a whole new crop of liars that come up, right? And they'll say, it's all the farmer's fault. They're polluting the rivers. They're using up all the water. Why, if it weren't for those farmers, we could walk across the backs of the river, walk across the river on the backs of the salmon, if there just weren't any more farmers. You know, there's a pattern here, OK? There's a pattern here. First, they came for the loggers. And they declared, ah, it's more important to burn down the forests and manage them, right? And then they came for the miners and said, we got to outlaw the mining because mining is bad, right? And then they come for the dams and then they come for the farmers. And who's going to be left at the end, huh? Who's going to be left? I tell you, winter is coming, okay? <laughs> Even those of you who are living on Social Security or disability or getting a government check, you know this country's $22 trillion in debt, right? And it's sinking fast. And the day will come probably within the lifetime of most of the people in this room, where you know what? All this damage that these fish worshipers cause, you can't paper it over anymore by writing checks because those checks are gonna bounce. That's the future. Now what about the law? What about the law? That's my profession, right? Well, your leaders looked at this situation and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Congress passed a federal law. It established an agency to control resource development on the Klamath River. It's the Klamath River Compact. Three Oregon members, three California members, a federal member. They're supposed to make the decisions. You can't have a bunch of low-level staff cooking up some secret settlement agreements and say, we're going to make all the decisions that way. That's contrary to federal law. And the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that's considering all this stuff, they have a duty to ensure that the people who appear in front of them asking for stuff have the legal right to do it. So how can some nonprofit corporation come in and say, hey, we don't care about federal law. We got this settlement deal here, and we're entitled to take the dams and blow them up. So we filed a motion to dismiss the FERC proceedings because there wasn't anybody in there qualified to hold the license. But you know what? Same answer. If there's something they don't like, oh, well, we'll just ignore it. The FERC staff refused to rule on the motion at all. A motion to dismiss. A motion to dismiss that would shut down the whole proceedings. It would stop everybody's party. And so we waited a few months and we went to the D.C. Circuit and we said, hey, come on. You file a motion to dismiss, they're supposed to decide that first instead of doing the whole case. And the answer was, we got it back last week, oh, well, you haven't been really prejudiced. It's just time and money. Everybody can keep writing the magic checks and maybe they'll rule on the motion someday, so just wait. So we wait on that. You know, the older I get, the less faith I have in the law. And, but I do know it can usually do one thing. It can really delay things. And when it comes to this dam removal project, this is a target-rich environment legally. You know, the California Water Board is about to issue an environmental impact review or statement that's so corrupt and stupid that even Pacificor was moved to file lots of comments saying, this thing's based on outdated information and just plain wrong. But of course it is. These people don't know how to do anything except lie, tell the same old lies. And so someday that decision will come out. That can be challenged. The water quality certifications can be challenged. 
Any fool knows that dumping millions of tons of sludge down a river has an adverse effect on water quality, right? And the United States Environmental Protect Protection Agency has to prove all, approve all this stuff, and guess what? Since Trump got elected, the EPA is, doesn't have a bunch of rotten fish worshippers at the top of it anymore. You know, one of my, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what one of my favorite things, one of my favorite ideas are? If I had a few thousand dollars to blow on this, you know what I would do? You know what one of the best legal strategies would be? You know what lives around all these reservoirs? Endangered species. We've got the giant California salamander. We've got the giant California garter snake. We've got endangered yellow-legged frogs. They tell me there's these possibly these new species of turtles up there that haven't been, even been identified yet. And these terrible, terrible people, they want to devastate these precious shoreline freshwater ecosystems and dry them up and kill all these little animals. I would take that few thousand bucks and I would hire some kid, some herpetologist who wants to make a name for himself. I'd tell them to get up there next month and start documenting the crap out of these things. And then I would take all these findings and I would paper them with every agency and everywhere else saying, you're going to kill the salamanders. It's the end of the world as we know it. You know, that's one legal target right there. I'll give you another legal target. How about the bond money, right? You remember this. They ran an election to get the money to blow up the dams. And guess what? The Cal even California voters aren't that stupid statewide. The bond vote went down. Yep. So they came in in the middle of a drought in 2014 and ran another bound bond. We're going to do water development projects, right? And that one passed. And so now what have they done? They've said, oh, well, I know the voters passed that money for water development projects, but we're just going to use it to blow up the dams. And if you look at the law, they're blowing right through that law. So anytime we want, go into court. Siskiyou County, any Siskiyou County judge with the courage can just say, I'm sorry, it's illegal to spend that money. But you know what the best legal remedy is of all? And really the most important one in the long run for unifying this community? Siskiyou County could use its power to act like a public utility district and say, I want the license. I want the yes. dams, right? And I want those dams without those expensive, stupid fish ladders because we don't need them, right? It's like shooting fish in a barrel, you know? I mean, right now, Pacific Corps is trying to wash its hands of these things because and no one wants it. No one wants it. But how are we going to save the dams if no one has the courage to step forward and say, we want them? Imagine a municipal utility district that could cut your power bills in half. Imagine small businesses flocking to the area because they want to do things like cast metal that uses energy and create real family wage sustainable jobs. Imagine if somebody competent was running the dams up there and you created these reservoirs like Shasta Lake where there were people with houseboats and houseboat businesses and people come and spend money on the houseboats. You know, any fool knows that makes a lot more money than having a bunch of half-naked backpackers walking up there in the mud flats, right? God, I mean, it's so obvious. Imagine if Siskiyou County said, wait a minute, we've got these special water rights and we'd like to put thousands of acres under irrigation with them. Siskiyou County's got a franchise agreement coming up with Pacific Corps. You know what a franchise agreement is? That's when you have the utility by the short and curlies. It's all a question of the county exercising the power that it has. Siskiyou County can become a self-sufficient oasis floating as the rest of California sinks into corruption and decay. So it's politics, folks. That's my final subject of the evening, politics. Now last time when I was here, we all sat down after the meeting. We wrote letters for Congressman Lamalfa here to take back to Washington. And that was great, okay? He's a big, strong guy, okay? But I tell you what, when he goes back to Washington, He's like one of 435 little children competing for the attention of daddy, okay? And we need more than just handing him some letters to take back with him, all right? Now, I've learned a few things in the past few years, all right? The old-fashioned political methods, they don't work anymore, okay? There isn't anybody lower on the social justice intersectionality totem pole than white people with property, right? 
I mean, your statewide leaders don't want to lift, lift a finger for you guys. They got important people to take care of, right? You know, and we don't have any giant corporations in Siskiyou County who can sort of wave giant piles of money around and get audiences with the interior secretary and every other secretary every other day of the week, right? If you want access, if you want people to pay attention to you, you're essentially going to have to take action that gets you in front of President Trump. And what does he do? He watches a lot of TV. You're going to have to be on TV. Somebody's going to have to ask President Trump, what the hell is going on out in Siskiyou County? What are you doing to those people, right? Now, I live in the heart of Portland, Oregon, okay? I live in, in a precinct that is essentially 95% Democrat, and the rest are probably too scared to vote. And what do I see about how these people, what do I see about how these people do politics? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They have taken over the entire educational system in Portland to mobilize students to become leftist activists. They had 70,000 students in the street doing demonstrations for gun control last year, right? Everything they care about is in every subject. They are now teaching how we need global government to fight climate change in the math classes, in the English classes, in the social studies classes. Every class is about the struggle, the revolution. Well, hey, why aren't your leaders making the war against Siskiyou County part of the curriculum in every county school, huh? Why shouldn't your students learn about the lies that were told to shut down the loggers and the lies that were told to shut down the miners and are now being told to blow up the dams and dry out the farmers? Why aren't your students in all these schools writing thousands of letters for Doug and all the other leaders? It doesn't cost anything to harness the passion of your youth for justice. Is there any higher calling than that in a community? Is there? It doesn't cost anything either. You just print the curriculum out and tell the teachers to teach it. You know, up in Portland, the city government is even using government resources to go around and collect votes on election day because they know they have to get all those votes in to override the will of all the people in the rest of Oregon living in the rural areas. Well. Are your city governments and county governments doing that? You know, it's time you stopped respecting the liars and the crooks. You know, what if all these people, these people from KLRC, these people from Sacramento, these people from the damn destruction company, all these people who have the moral standing of grave robbers, what if this community, what if this community united to reject them in every way possible? You know, up in Portland, that's what the leftist gangs do. If there's a leader standing for freedom and justice in Portland, you know what Antifa will do up there? They'll put up wanted posters on the trees and fences near his house. You've read about President Trump's appointees being thrown out of restaurants, right? What if dam removal activists couldn't eat in this town? What if they couldn't get hotel rooms? What if they couldn't buy gas? What if your sheriff arrested them every time they went one mile over the speed limit? What if they were afraid to come to Siskiyou County? You know, this stuff seems extreme, but this is happening right now in Portland, Oregon. And the left is moving its agenda this way. You know, up in Portland, the leftist gangs even control the streets. They have taken over the streets, shut them down, directed traffic, and if some citizen is like, well, you're not a traffic cop, I'm going to drive the way they want, they will smash the car and beat the person up. They have blocked I-5, and the local police have helped them do it. So what if a thousand people in this community blocked I-5 every night for a week on this issue, and the local police helped them do it? What if they blocked Warren Buffett's railroad tracks and said, hey, Pacific Corps, wake up. Tell them you'll be glad to run the land, the, the, the dams without this, all this stupid fish ladder stuff. You know, it seems extreme, but it's happening now. And the local judges and prosecutors up in Portland, they just let all these people go so they can do it again. The activists up there have been arrested four, five, six times. Nothing ever happens to them. So, in conclusion, because everybody wants to eat. <laughs> The Siskiyou County people voted 80% in front of these, supporting these dams. That's an outstanding display of unity and common sense, because we all know about 20% of people are crazy anyway, right? 
You can fight this. You can restore this community to prosperity. You can become self-sufficient again. But you have to believe in yourselves. And you have to believe that you and your children have a right to live here. You and your children have a right to make a living, a right to use the water, a right to change the environment in sensible ways that benefit everybody. Believe in yourselves and help the leaders fighting this battle, and we can win. Thank you very much.